Sarah Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. Okay, now you can see I'm like cruising for junk journal supplies. This is from my one of my favorite shops, Covetable Curiosities, and looking for um, Christmas dangles. But let's get to work. This is day two of our Etsy shop edits. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into stats. Oh, let's get this over here. And now we want to look at our top 10 sales. Okay. And so for, so now I'm going to go back to last 30 days. I want to see what's happening right now. And I want to see. Orders. Okay. So we're going to go top 10 sale, uh, last 30 days orders. So I have. My top 10 are direct sales, real estate, those are both planners, uh, eBay sheet, Etsy sheet. SEO worksheet, so that's what, five, one, two, three, four, five, seven streams, monthly business goals, Etsy, oops, not Betsy, Etsy, Biz Bundle, Picking Sheets, Etsy, eBay, and Daily Planner Page. Okay. And to let you know, because I think that this is important, um, these are all the things that have the lowest sales, right? So let's go to the lowest. Those are all the custom forms, but big ideas sheet, project sheet, 2017 calendar, obviously. Um, nothing there. I think that writing a blog post, Etsy shop reviews, I don't offer those anymore. So writing a blog post or sales letter worksheet is my least. So three people viewed it, one people favored it. So in my... Um, in my world, I'm going to start adding some items that I think will sell well. We'll do that on another day. But I also want to know which ones to delete, right? We don't want to keep products in our shops that don't ever um, that don't ever sell because it just doesn't help, right? Um, and I don't necessarily need this on my worksheet, but I need to know, uh, what, okay, none of these, okay, hold on, let's get an idea, I'm just going to go one more little set here. Because we're doing this together. Black Friday. I'm not going to mark that because it's not Black Friday. Um, perfect customer. Uh, real estate SEO worksheet. Two by two lead sheet. And editorial calendar for bloggers. Okay, so I'm always big on, as I'm going through here, making notes to myself. So blogging an email, wah, 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 right? They're not loving those. Um, all blogging, a couple of uh, real estates, 
Um, let's see, move to blog. So what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to make those free giveaways on my blog. Now, what if you're a vintage seller and you have your lowest sales um, and you don't have extra ones or you're a handmade seller and, you know, like these are actual products. You can't just move them around. I would consider putting your lowest ones on a, um, you know, on a sale, on that, trying to move those out of your shop. But let's go back to our main ones and what we're going to do with our worksheet. So I want to know two things about these top 10 blog posts. I want to know the number of sales and the revenue. Okay. There we go. Sales and revenue. That's important. let's do this that'll even help me remember so we need one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten perfect all right now this line is running into this line so oops that is not what I was trying to do I got to get over here Okay, perfect. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so let's think about, now we want to think about the difference between sales and revenue. So Say you are a vintage seller and you get 50 sales a month from Chandelier Charms, but they only cost $4 and you get a hundred and you get, um, so that was 50 and you get five sales a month from a higher priced item, but you don't have as many listings. You don't have as much to manage. You would want to look at maybe sourcing higher priced items. But now we're going to talk about my stuff because that's what I like to talk about, right? Uh-oh. I took my box off around here. I'm going to have to see what it looked like before. Um, those are stats. Okay. So we have, and now I want to, I want to have um, sales and revenue. So we're going to look at our sales and revenue. So this is, I'm going to have to scooch this over for a second. Doo -doo -doo. That is not working. Whatever I'm trying to do there is not working. Okay, here we go. Okay, so top, top 10. It's going to be sales and revenue. So four sales... $70. Next one is real estate planner for sales. $70. I know. I have that one priced at $16.90. I have it one penny off, so but that's why it's a weird number. Okay, the eBay product worksheet is two sales, $10.50. All right, it, Etsy sheet is eight sales, $17, $17.50. Okay, this happened a long time ago. When I first started my um, shop, I decided that I was going to have just low priced um, uh, worksheets. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I have to sell five of these to equal one direct planner sale. 
So that's when I did do, you could do it with groupings. So say you're, um, you're selling, uh, like your handmade items. You could do a listing with multiple products in it. You could do a customized listing. You could do a lot of things. But if you want to be able to have fewer sales and higher revenue, then you have to have higher priced items to sell. So that's just, I know it seems simple, but these are all things we want to think about as we're doing our refresh, because the reason why we're looking at our top 10 listings is we want to know what's going on, what people are actually doing. That's weird. That has no sales. So that's got to come off our top 10. I don't want something with no sales. Okay. Uh, monthly business goals. That has a sale. So one sale, 1.99. Business bundle, one sale, 12.50. Remind me to tell you about proof of concept. Picking sheet, one sale, $2. And then this does not have a sale. Okay, so those are all my products that have sales. So that's all that matters. Now let's look and go back. I'm gonna put this right here, proof of concept, so I don't forget. So that's just looking at the last 30 days. Now for me, I sell planners, right? Um, so there's definitely a chance that stuff is going downhill because people buy stuff in January and it goes downhill. So I don't want to totally make a decision based on just the last 30 days because that could be really different, right? So let's see what happened all year. So we have um, real estate planner, yay, Etsy products listing sheet. XT sheet, there we go. Direct sales planner. Okay, we don't, oh, there's the direct sales planner. eBay sheet, business calendar kit. Okay, that's new. And that has had 25 sales this year. So I'm not gonna put it in my current sales, but I wanna know about it. Picking sheet, I know we had a picking sheet. SEO worksheet, bing. Business bundle, 12 of those, that's good. And then daily planner pages, that's still only one. That to me doesn't, that doesn't scream good. And then we have the Etsy seller planner. So Etsy seller planner. Okay, so that is, that's it for me and kind of looking at my stats and my top sellers. Now I wanna start thinking about what does this mean, right? Like, um, like I need my notes for this. So let's start thinking about that. So proof of concept means that if, oh, I have the perfect example of this. I thought that these thermometers, vintage thermometers, that look like a banjo. So they're a circle at the bottom and then a stem that goes up. You hang them on the wall. They're super popular in Florida. I see them all over the place. So I thought that they would sell for me. And so I went to an auction. I bought like two. I went to a yard sale. I found one. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I have like three of these to sell. And literally I had them listed. Nobody looked at them. Nobody wanted them. Nobody would buy them. I wound up donating them because I could never get anything to happen with them because there's no proof of concept. Like I had in my head what I thought would happen, but that isn't what actually happened. I had, so you only want to go by what has actually sold. So for me, I'm going to make some notes for myself. Um, planners. So direct sales. Realtor. And Etsy planner are all good ones that I'm going to spend some time on, right? That's going to be a focus of my refresh. Um, Etsy sheets, there's all different kinds of stuff there. 
So I want to spend some time on those too. And then based on the fact that a um, monthly business goals and a daily business goals make some more monthly and daily goals sheets, right? Okay, so that is all I'm going to do today. Um, I'm trying to keep these to about 15 minutes so they don't take up your whole life. And I've been chitty chatting. So when you do yours, this shouldn't take more than about 15 minutes to do. Um, but that is what I'm going to start thinking about. These are going to be the products that I'm going to start looking at to see if I can increase their sales. And also, can I make other ones that are similar to that? So hopefully that helps, Tara Jacobson. Marketing Artfully.